Question 7 of this series comes from one of our fans that needed help finding the derivative of this function using the delta method. As you can see, the question has been given a difficulty rating of challenging. So let's go ahead and find out how this is done. The first thing that I'll do is replace this radical, this symbol, as a fractional exponent. And the reason why I'm doing that is because fractional exponents are easier to work with than radicals, especially in this case. So we have x times x to the power of half. This is the same thing as the square root of x. And the bases are the same, and they're being multiplied, so we add the exponents, 1 and half. And we end up with x to the power of 3 over 2. So our function will be represented as this. Now I'll apply x plus delta x into where I see an x. Technically, I'm placing this into the definition of a derivative, the limit. So we have the limit as delta x approaches 0. And I'll replace x plus delta x into here, raised to the power of 3 over 2, minus the function itself divided by delta x. Now, if you apply the limit at this stage, you'll end up with an error because you're placing 0 into the denominator. What we have to do is algebraically manipulate this so that we don't run into this issue once we take the limit. The only way around it is by modeling the numerator of this limit so that it looks like a difference of squares. If that's confusing to you, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start by setting a equal to this whole expression and b equaling to this. And I chose these letters arbitrarily. You could have chosen any letters that you like. Now if I set a equal to x plus delta x raised to the power of 3 over 2, and b is equal to x to the power of 3 over 2, what I want to do, since I've made this a minus b, is make it look like a squared minus b squared, these two terms. And then rearrange the difference of squares formula into a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared over a plus b. Then we can take this expression and replace this whole numerator with that. So first, let's find out what a squared is. And we can find that by squaring both sides of this equation. That gives us a squared is equal to x plus delta x raised to the power of 3. And squaring both sides here, we end up with b squared is equal to x to the power of 3. So I just found this and that. And also, you can find this part by replacing a and b with what we set them as. So let's go ahead and place these into here and here and what we set a and b as originally. We get x plus delta x raised to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 3 over x plus delta x raised to the power of 3 over 2, I'm looking right here, plus this part, x to the power of 3 over 2. So we found the numerator of our limit. And remember, the denominator is the same. Now, if we simplify this, this delta x will go into the denominator. And you'll end up with something that looks like this. Notice now that it's a factor in the denominator. If we apply the limit at this stage, if I put a 0 into here, I'll end up with still an error. I still can't take the limit, even though I just did this algebraic manipulation. Now you have to do a second algebraic manipulation, and that involves a difference of cubes. This numerator is a difference of cubes, and the formula for a difference of cubes is shown right here. So I'll apply the same technique by setting this term as a and this term as b. Now technically, you're supposed to use different letters, but just for the sake of simplicity, I'll use a and b again. So let's go ahead and do that. a is equal to x plus delta x, and b is equal to x. What I'll do next is raise both sides to the power of 3, where I end up with a to the power of 3, and over here, b to the power of 3, and x to the power of 3. Now that I found a to the power of 3 and b to the power of 3, I can replace this whole expression with the right side of the difference of cubes formula. 
In case you're confused, here's what I mean. A minus B, remember we set A as X plus delta X, X plus delta X, minus B, which was X. Close bracket, now we open this one. Remember, this expression that we're writing in orange is going to replace the numerator. A to the power of two, X plus delta X, raised to the power of two, plus X plus delta X times B, which is X, plus X raised to the power of two. All over this part. And remember, we still haven't taken the limit. Now we can start to simplify. We have minus X and this X, they cancel out. And look what happens, something very special. This delta X is now on its own. It's a factor of its own, which can be canceled out with this one. This should really excite you because now you can apply the limit and not have to worry about this becoming zero. So if I apply the limit, delta X here becomes zero. We're left with X to the power of two. That becomes zero. So we have X times X and X squared over here. This becomes zero. Now that the limit has been taken, we don't need to show that symbol anymore. So what are we left with at the top? X to the power of two plus X to the power of two, X times X plus X to the power of two over X to the power of three over two plus X to the power of three over two. Let's simplify further. We have three of these, so we have three X squared. And over here, we have two of those. Using the laws of exponents, we have X here and an X here. Two minus three over two, which gives you one over two. So three over two times X to the power of half or three times the square root of X over two represents d over dx, the derivative of the function we started with. And there you have it. That is how to find the derivative by the delta method.